Okay, so part B is actually quite straightforward. You are required to find the diameter for the shafts A, B and C, D. So using my torque diagram here, you can see uh, in the section A, B and C, D, they both have torques of six kilonewton meters, albeit one's uh, going anti-clockwise and one's going clockwise. Not going to make any difference in terms of uh, uh, your how things are getting twisted or whatever. One's getting twisted one way, the other one's getting twisted the other, uh, the other way. So we are going to be using this part of the torsion engineer's equation. <clears throat> and we'll use six kilonewton meters for our torque in both instances. So the answer we're looking for is just one answer. So they've made it nice and easy for us there. So we are going to use just this. The equation, and this time we're looking for essentially speaking, we're looking for J. So bring J up, Let's bring R across, and torque underneath. Okay, so J comes up, torque goes underneath, R goes above. Now what we're looking for is the diameter of the shaft. I know J is a function of diameter. Obviously, R is also a function of diameter, so I shouldn't have moved it across. So let's rewrite this. J over D over 2. Of course, the torque divided by the shear. Stress. So our J equation works out to be pi d to the power four divided by d. So we should have thirty two there over two. So therefore we get d to the power 3, 32 divided by 2 is 16, let's bring it across, and the pi, let's bring that across. So let's put all our numbers in and take the third root. So here from the previous sketch, remember that that is 6,000. Look back. If you want, you can also see that you, because they're the end parts, you can see that they're going to be 6 kilonewton meters. So if you start from this end, you've got a twisting of six kilonewton meters. Start from this end, you've got a twisting of six kilonewton meters. I will work in SI units. So that's the 6,000 divided by the pi. And that is 65 times 10 to the 6. So what's that? 16 times 6,000 divided by pi divided by 65 to the 10 to the 6. Take that to the, the power. Sure, I've got a third root on my calculator, so I'll use that. And press an engine in, 
inch button and I get 77.75 six millimeters so actually I'm gonna do uh, another one so I can talk about uh, a pressure vessel equation that my first years all got wrong so imagine this was the answer and we were designing, not that we would do, but we were designing the shaft very high precision to five significant figures. So what all the first years said was you want to construct your shaft, therefore seven six okay so let's uh, think about this so you can see that your shear, your shear max if we bring this across bring this R across the J is uh, the J divided by the R basically we're ending up with a D to the power 3 sort of term below the amount of torque that you've got there. So if I make my um, diameter just a tad bigger, I'm reducing my um, shear stress. So if we were doing this to high position, this would not be the way that you would want to round your result because uh, you have now made your, uh, you've given your, your sh uh, shear stress a value just a bit above. So you would want to round your uh, result upwards so that this is 757. Now, unfortunately, all these are big numbers. So uh, the actual result is 7.8. 7 but you need to think about the structural integrity of your thing that you're, you're designing and whether you need to be rounding, not in terms of the maths, but in terms of the structure. So in this particular case, the structure is telling us that we want to be making things a little bit thicker because of our maximum stress. So if we had seven, if the result happened to be, say, seven, seven, uh, seven, three, it wasn't, but if it was that, then the result that you should be presenting as your final answer, again, should be 77.8 seven and not 77.7. Seven because although that's mathematically correct to be rounding that down, you need to think about that you're an engineer. And so that therefore you're trying to make your structure stay within the stress limits and you want to be rounding up. You can't ignore this free. Okay, so you need to round that up. So that was an error of which a lot of the first years got wrong for when they were dealing with pressure vessels they all rounded down it was an elephant trap I set them and they all fell into it